Play a long play game. Point five fifteen. We're off. Okay, we'll come and support the palm. A bit quick, must be familiar with the opening system. Let's just push here. I took that moment to pause on purpose. Just to slow it down a bit. Going to take the pawn. Bring the bishop. I'm going to continue taking the knight. No, it slowed them down, which is good. So I've asked for a long play game, not a blitzy type stuff. Let's take. Well, they're looking to obliterate the center. I like their style. Let's get rid of it. They're obviously playing way too fast so I'm hoping we can take advantage of this or it might just be that we're just going to end up simplifying and it ends up being a draw. We will just put the check on the king. And we will take the queen off the board. Yep, looks like they're just playing for a draw really. That's why they're moving so fast. So I'm going to bring the bishop here attacking this pawn. Can't just drop it really because then it's an even exchange. Yep, I don't know what that big delay was for really. Let's castle. Nice and simple. Let's see if we can circumvent their attempt at going for a draw. It seems to have slowed down a little bit. I'm hoping that their position is not going to be good now that they've slowed down. Because they just whipped out the moves like, let's just get pieces off the board type thing. Obviously they're going castling now, so I, again, I don't know why this delay is happening. Okay, so we have like an x-ray through, so the bishop could go and take the knight off the board. Shall we just keep it real simple? Attack the knight with the rook. So the rook potentially gets to own the file, maybe. Okay, way too fast. Let's take it for this. It's not trapping the rook. And they've left the game. That's a bit speedy. You could almost tell they didn't want to play a long play game or they were going for a draw of some sort. We'll claim victory on that one. Five fifteen. See how we get on here. See if we can put into practice all the things we've been learning throughout the year of twenty twenty four. All comes back down to the answer process that we're working on. Simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically so at some stage you're going to be removing pieces off the board you can't get away from that fact unless of course the opponent is working with you in order to just block every piece down so that there's no pieces taken off the board and no activities taking place so it ends up being a draw those circumstances that can be kind of very rare but you do get draws but pieces still get taken off the board strategically. Let's x-ray through to the king. See how simple and direct we can make our moves. And if there is a capture and taking off the board, then we'll take that action. So we can now actually attack this pawn, but what I think is they're just going to push onto the knight. Let's castle. Bring the rook here in readiness. We're capturing the pawn, obviously. 
people are now supporting it with this pawn here which is okay up to a point now we can attack the pawn because if the pawn does push past we can take the pawn with the rook pawn can't take because the rook has got the x-ray through to the king so they'll bring something out maybe the oh they're actually attacking the bishop fair enough let's take the bishop off the board don't need to monologue that section and take this pawn have to be mindful the knight is in a nice position so do we hit the knight first but it sends it back it gets a 2 on one here we take we're on the queen lots of things can happen just worried because we take and say they do take back rook can take it's got to check on i'm just worried about this pawn getting taken but does it get taken probably because if we take the queen takes then the rook will take and then the knight takes the pawn that's how that's going to work so that's what i'm worried about so i think i'm going to hit the knight goes back gets the two on one so it's going to be an even exchange i think it's a 15 second increment so i'm not expecting this to go to the end of the game in terms of losing on time let's try and find appropriate positions try and remove pieces from the ball strategically simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically and then obviously there's all the other concepts underneath the, the mantra at any given time, any given moment on the board, one of those pieces will take place. So they've not actually gone back there. They've gone for an exchange. I think this might work for us better. So I'm going to take, or maybe not better, but more comfortable position. So a simple capture of the pawn, we're on the queen, knight supporting the pawn, so when the queen takes, the rook takes. It's a little bit better position for us. Currently plus one, but as we know, being plus one doesn't mean you've won the game unless your pieces are supporting the pieces, developing towards managing key squares and key pieces with the extra pawn that you've got. Queen's move, so we can take, we're going to be kind of pinning the queen to the king. So the king can't actually take, so they're probably going to have to take the rook. That was a lot of thinking to put that in that position there, but that type of thing can happen. I think we will call that as a blunder, I think. I can't see them getting any benefits out of this position. It looks like they've left the game. So a small list of details in terms of movement on the board. helped us to get a better position on the board for ourselves but it's been able to see those opportunities that's the key thing as we're working through the mantra for the answer to chess it is about actually being able to see it because how many times do we go back after the game look at the evaluation and then we find that there's moves that we could have done that would have improved our gameplay even more and that's quite the majority of the games so being able to see those opportunities is experience, it is constant practice, constant training, but at the end of the day, it really is about looking for those opportunities because you can play umpteen million games of chess and not really see anything because you're not actually looking for anything and you're just playing the game of chess. 
we're trying to develop our knowledge and skills by actually being able to see these things and actually apply what we're trying to practice in the mantra uh, constantly. It's not 100% proof, it's no complete answer to chess, but we're looking at trying to develop our own personal answer to chess, utilizing these uh, concepts and methodologies. Okay, 45.15. Continuing the practice of what we've learned throughout the year, the experiences that we've had. New methodologies, new movements. Still sticking with the basics of the mantra leading through to the answer to chess. Our version of the answer to chess is nobody else's answer. Everybody's got a different answer to chess. A nice steady opening. It's baiting us to take the pawn here. It's kind of a poison pawn because the continuations, you can take it, yep, yeah, they can push onto the knight, knight has to move or something and then they get this pawn here. They've got more pieces in front of our king causing problems. So we're going to stay away from that and just push the pawn here. Some might be able to make it work but from my experience the position of the pieces that they've currently got it would be in more advantage. We can break it down later if we, if we remember. Because it is a long play game. 45 minutes, 15 second increment. Alright, so we can take the pawn off the board. Because we do have this pawn supporting if they're pushing here. Just to obliterate the centre. I'm going to bring the bishop here. Ordinarily, I just take with the pawn anyway, even if the knight did take. We're going to castle now just to get the king to safety. And they're dancing around with the knight. So this, this is where I'm going to take a moment's pause here. As I've mentioned before, when you see dancing knights, it's probably best just to take a bit of a pause and have a look at what they're actually trying to do because these are it's magical. Yeah, and you can look at it and say, well... <laughs> They must be using something if they're dancing around with the knight and it doesn't look like they're putting any thought into the moves or anything. But they've not done anything illegal with the knight move, you know, online. You can't make a cheap move. So it is available there. Whether they're using anything or not to assist them, it's available. That position is. And there is something we can potentially do against it. So our bishop can take the knight off the board. Yeah, we don't have to because we've got protection here. We could move our knight and attack their bishop because it's got no protection on. Giving them something to think about. So we have options and choices. Taking brings his pawn a little bit closer to our king. Opens up his rook. We'd have to bring our rook here, getting um, all defense nanny. Or attacking. I think I'm plumping for, for attacking, so let's attack. So we take that moment's pause when things are going too fast, the opponent's moving real quick. Looks like they're not putting any thought into the game. Let's take that moment to try and find those better moves, if we can. If they are using a tool, then so be it. But at least you've tried to circumvent the best manoeuvres that they've got. We're going to come here and expect this pawn to be hitting. So he's attacking our queen and we're still attacking his, his um, bishop. So you see the speed at which they're moving, yeah? At each stage, there's going to be pressure. So if we take and then the pawn takes, then our knight's not going to be taking the free bishop because the rook will take the queen. So strange little positions like that. Not putting any thought in, it seems to be a little bit automated. Do we need to take the knight? Well, not really. We can move the queen out of the way. But I am going to take the knight. And they've actually taken with the bishop. Which I'm really shocked at because I thought they would have been taken with the pawn. So it looks like they've got carried away with their manoeuvres. So I'm going to attack the bishop with the bishop. Taking it nice and slow and steady. 
is to try and find the better position. They did think they were going to take with the pawn. They're probably thinking now, oh, I should have taken with the pawn because that opens up the rook to attack the queen. Okay, so they've moved out of the way. So we could move our queen off of the line of the attack of the um, rook because this is going to be hitting anyway. But the pawn's just blocking. So is there any way of getting through to their king at all? It's all even Stevens at the moment, materially. And they don't want to exchange the bishop. Bishop's got this. So I think I'm just going to move the king just away from this diagonal based on my previous past experience of not moving the king and then just getting suffocated. That was always coming. But we can simply bring the knight here. It's just going to get chased around a bit. Or we could bring it here even. Okay, I'm going to bring it here. It's getting chased. We just jump back again. All right, so he's now realizing that the queen is here. <laughs> right. So they're moving way too fast for me. In my head, they're moving way too fast, which is a good thing for us, but we need to be able to capitalize on it. We take, takes, pawns getting advanced down the board, opens up dark squares towards the king, but obviously the bishop can defend. But we will take, just keeping it simple. Do have an attack on their king, queen, sorry. It just means the queen can come all over the place, so I don't know. That's not really a good check. I mean, it's a check, but the bishop comes and blocks. So he's actually attacking the knight. We can bounce up, but again, if the bishop takes, pawn takes, we can't take. So it looks like the knight's being put into a little bit of a sticky situation. Oh, they've resigned. No patience. So the knight can come round here and attack the pawn. I'm up. See, let's have a look at the analysis. We said we're going to look at the earlier part of that game. If we go right to the beginning and have a look at the continuation, the craziness of this opening. So we captured, defended, that's all. And then the dancing with the knights. And we decide to move the knight and attack the bishop. It's saying the bishop taking, yeah, we were oming and ahhing about that, weren't we? So that would have been the better option. I think what made me keep the um, bishop was because it was the white square bishop and it still had a bit of play in the game, in my head. If it was the black bishop, I would have taken the knight off the board because obviously that's my bad bishop, it's all cooped up. That was my kind of rationale subconsciously. Uh, so they take and take, and this is obviously because they can see this rook act activity coming on here. Okay, so they're still plus, but it's nothing major. We go and attack, and yeah, we did think that they were gonna take with the pawn. I thought it would have shown more, more there, and it's not happy with that pawn take. Hmm. Interesting. Because we would have moved the queen out of the way. Either to here or to here or something. We don't want that. They're saying that's nothing major. Okay, right, cool. So they took with the bishop. It's like drawish really, then they attack the knight. Bring the knight down. And it's not a fan of that pawn move. I bet we didn't do the right thing though, did we? Oh, we captured. Yes, good. And it's worse for them. So we were going to be moving the knight here because there's nowhere else for it to go. It can't come here. Can't go there. Can't go there. It looks like it's trapped. It can come here, but obviously we're not going to do that because the bishop takes and then the pawn takes, the rook takes. But the only best place is for to come here. It's attacking this pawn. It's attacking this bishop. Bishop's attacking there as well. It's not looking too bad for us in that situation. I'm going to play another one because this one didn't get finalized, but 
think the computer's working with us on this side. If it wasn't working with us on this side, I would still be happy with what we did during the game. What, 5.15? Oh dear, we've got a funny game going on. I think I'm going to go into the account after this. Um, just push this and block the pawn. Let's just attack. Develop the knight. Going to hit the pawn, see if we can get rid of these pawns in the center. Going to take. Don't need to move so fast, but just let's get rid of this um, situation and see how the land lies. Going to take this pawn and then take the knight off the board. So it must be silly hour uh, that we're meeting here at the minute. Going to take this pawn and take the queen. And then x-ray through to the king. Potential for castling queen side. The check on the king. The check on the king. That's where bishop really wanted to be here. The pawn is there. But it needs to get out of the situation so that we can make space for the rook. Coming opposite the king. Bishops, oh my days, bishops got no protection on it. And the knight has moved, the bishops got protection with the pawn, so we can take the knight. Take the bishop. Oh, we let a piece go. That's not what's supposed to happen. Let's go and take this. Now they're just going crazy. Rooks on a white square, bring the bishop back. Oh, okay. We'll still do that anyway. And take the rook off the board. Very special game indeed. And put a check on the king. Might not be the best check in the world because the bishop's under attack, but let's just move that out of the way. Could have actually gone there. Let's just keep the bishop out of the way. Put the check on. Get the knight involved as well. Not a mate because they can come here. It's blocking that attempt. Bishop is white squared. Anything else, just pump the rook up here. That would be a mate. But now he's giving space, so it's not a mate. Put the check. Safe haven of this square. Attack the rook. And they're giving the rook up. But is it as soon as it's not a stalemate? You can move all them pawns. It's got this safe spot here. Don't think we should go and peel all them pawns off. That's what I don't think we should do. Boom, boom, boom. We'll probably take a few off so we can make some space for getting the king. Just gonna keep hiding in there. Get the check on. Now be very careful. He's got pawns, pawns, pawns. Just going to be able to defend himself everywhere he goes, hiding away his little king. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Don't overthink it, nice and steady away. Nothing worse than having all of your pieces and you just can't get a checkmate on the king. Now he's going to get rid of the pawns, but he's getting the stalemate. I'm going to squeeze in one. Squeeze again. Still on the same spot. Doo -doo. 
go here I'm gonna always end up in this little square Okay, it's on a white square for a change. To put a bit of teamwork in, and it's coming for the rook. He's supporting each piece type thing. There's none of that, there's none of that, there is that. So if we can just move this bishop like this, then there would be that. Nice one, teamwork. Okay, so we're in the account for a 45 15 game see how we get on as usual don't look at the ratings type things i mean this 1400 they'll be experimenting with obscure moves and stuff like that so can expect some oddball type of opening and strange activities in the mid game that's what i would kind of expect It'll be more tactical over positional. So that's my initial thoughts, you know, based on the traits that we're aware of with the 1400s, but they might not fall into that at all. And they may play 500 points higher. What have we got? Nice steady opening. Looks nice and safe. We're in a castle. Looking safety. Castle 2. And I think we'll just stick with what we like to do. Bring the pawn up. Try and go for either attacking the bishop or attacking the queen through the knight. This is where the tactical arrangements are going to start kicking in, the thinking of the tactical stuff, not looking more positionally. This looks fairly neat for a 1400, just thought I'd mention that, but they've jumped the knight in now and this is where the tactical stuff is going to start kicking in. Do they go for it fully or are they just going to try and be simple and try and play like a 1900? The 1900s play simple chess um, well, yeah? very well not excellent because they make mistakes as well do you know what i mean overly simplifying in a sense and they miss the opportunities for great attacks in most of the cases but this night this 1400 is almost starting to play like that because it's a simple opening it's not really blowing anybody out the water so i'm, I'm being very wary at this moment I'm going to bring our bishop off the back So if there's no major tactical stuff going on here, we have to be very careful. They're going for simple, simple, steady chess. I mean, this is what this player is doing here. I mean, this is so simple and not overextending really in any way. So I'm going to attack the bishop like we do. Just waiting for the thought of the tactical arrangement that messes their position up. Because this is very, fairly neat for a 1400 as a starting point. We're now jumping into the start of you know, the middle game. Going towards the end game, hopefully. So it's how they transition from that into the end game, into the middle game, into the end game. Okay, 
Okay, nice simple basic chest, just attacking the knights, not bothered about the bishop, going to take the bishop. Nothing really tactical at the minute, it's just more like simple chess. I really wouldn't put them as a 1400, I wonder if I can see if there's any other... No, it's only... doesn't play anything else, it's just playing long play game. Alright, so we can now just see what the bishop wants to do. Or see what the knight wants to do. I think I like seeing what the knight wants to do. I think he will take the bishop now. Just capture. Don't really need to do too much there. Their queen is on this pawn, so a mini tactical arrangement in a sense. So we'll take with the pawn. It does disrupt our pawn structure in front of our king, but it does also give us a passageway to their king. Yeah, so really not a 1400. Um, this person's skill level is probably talking 1800, 1850 or something like that. Vision's a little bit good. So I'm going to bring the queen off of the line and <clears throat> maybe bring a rook here opposite their king, queen. Whilst we're looking to get the king across and maybe do an attack towards the king. <sighs> Delicate little pawn moves, all basic stuff. You don't, this is not 1400 level play. So at least we know this and we can keep reiterating in our heads that this isn't 1400 level play. So maybe we can start bumping up. We know that there's going to be no surprises. The tactical arrangements have gone out the window in terms of the opening and the beginning of this mid game um, game here. It was a mini one, but it wasn't too major. It was so simple. It's what you'd expect to see from like a higher rated player. Well, I would. I'm only speaking on my experience. Others may go, oh, no, he's just playing like a thousand level player or 900. But based on my experience, it feels like a, a lot higher. Which is okay, because then at least we know what we're playing. You know, we're not going to be surprised then. We know they're going to try and find the more simplified manoeuvres that really do stretch out the game. And it might be the minutest of advantages that they gain. But that's what they'll build on. But we have to be mindful that they may miss the big picture of a quality attack, quality attack or the potential for a checkmate. Because they're not a chess god. You know, they're humans like us. We hope, fingers crossed. So mistakes are going to be made. We need to see if we can take advantage of any mistakes. I feel like I'm taking advantage of the mistake in terms of the captures that took place, which is opening up there, which opened up their king for us to be able to attack. And we're slowly trying to take advantage of that, whether it's going to work or not. So we're attacking the pawn. If they do take, bishop can take. We've still got a bit of a line in. Queen's got a bit of space here, but the knight is there at the minute. But we're building. We're building. We can move the king, get the rooks here, cause a bit of disturbance. Does that still have his pawns there? They may look to start doubling themselves with the rooks, attacking this weak pawn, which is defended by the queen. So we may have to revert to being defense nanny. No, so they're blocking off the attempt so we could take this pawn if the rook takes then the bishop takes this pawn and then the rook is looking to come here with a check on the king cow that advanced their thinking we could push the pawn and then he pushes down 
and it kind of stops any activity going in that way. Queen can't come at the knights there, blocks down any attack that the bishop was potentially going to do. So I think capturing gives us a start, but it also gives them a start as well. We take, the rook comes here, the rook wants to get here to put a check on the king. And the tempo wise, we're not going to get the king moved and then the rook here before any of that. So if we move the king now, what could he do? I don't think they'll do it. They're not entertaining any of, any of that because they want the rook to do, come down. So maybe they'd move the rook down, but it's not to that square, is it? Or maybe the knight comes here because it's got to support the pawn now. And then it's hitting this twice. Okay, so we move the king. Knight comes here, is attacking the pawn twice, baiting us to actually take the pawn. So we take, rook takes. Because the king's moved now, we can actually take this pawn. Rook comes here, then we take it off the board with the bishop. Oh, we don't need to worry about that anyway, do we? We take, rook takes, bishop takes. This rook's not coming here because we'll take it with the bishop. Let's take the pawn off the board. Visualization, let me down. So that's only a two step calculation, isn't it? So that's one and then two with a potential for three. But I, now that we've seen that, but maybe we should have looked a little bit further. So they do take, we take, and do we get the bishop trapped? Because the pawn can drop down. Uh, the pawn can drop down and block the bishop. Oh. Block the bishop and then the king can come over and take the bishop off the board. Ooh, it's even Stevens at the minute, dude. Move the king. Drops the pawn. Hit the rook. In fact, we could hit the rook now with the pawn, couldn't we? I think we're going to do that. Ooh, yeah, shabby times. Let's hit this rook. Rook in the center of the board has no place. Unless he's coming across here, queen's not going to take. Wow, it's good to talk. Always, you can see the picture better when the moves have actually been made because you, well, for me, always missing pieces that can attack pieces or block pieces or defend pieces or not really realizing that that piece can actually attack that piece. But then when you look at it even further, then that piece could get trapped and you lose it. But they actually brought the rook back. So the fear of attacking here anymore is gone. But we have not got access to this pawn. We pushed here, it's just going to push down. Queen's not got access here, so we're going to have to hit this knight to get this knight out of the way. I think. You have to be careful when you're hitting knights because you really don't know where you're sending them. There. Could come here. He can go here, he can go here, he can't go there or there or there, physically can come here, and he physically can go there. I covered all of the areas that that knight can go to. This one he gets taken, this one he doesn't get taken, it's just hanging there being annoying. This one is attacking the bishop. Is attacking the pawn. I'm just seeing if we lose the pawn. It's always the head of the snake is always taken off the board. I think we're going to hit the knight. Don't like our queen being opposite the rook. But this is why we're wanting to try and get the 
queen into some sort of position in front of their king. But it all depends where the knight goes. I think it will attack the bishop because it's giving it something proactive to do. So the queen's probably coming here, gets it off of the rook's line, but also defending the bishop for a brief moment. And that's when the knight takes, queen takes, and then he pushes the pawn down. And we can't take the pawn back because the rook is opposite the queen. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's what's going to happen. Oh. Damn. You know, I think I hate seeing these things. Because it's that overly respecting the position of the player. If they do do that, then, you know... We're not, we're basically working on what's actually happening. But what can we do about it? I don't think there's a right lot we can do about it. Comes here. Remove. In fact, we just move the bishop. Don't even need to go with that. It does that anyway. Then we go there. We take. Pawn pushes. Pawn doesn't have to take. Pawn can push up. Then his queen comes on. We bring our rook behind. The pawn can push up, but that. No, it can't because the pawn's there. That pawn's there. Alright, let me do that again. There. See? Bakes. No, the pawn's not there. The pawn has come down to attack. So we push. The queen comes. We'll attack it, bring the rook in to defend, pushes his rook down, that he brings his other rook into the game, we push our rook up to defend, he brings his other rook in behind, it's all a bit of a attacking on the pawn but it's us doing the attacking so it's giving them something to think about, so it's turned into a bit of a positive in my head, whether or not it's going to happen physically. Yes, yeah, so they're going for it. So we'll go here. And if they follow the track, we've got the combination that we wanted to go with. But if they don't and it breaks off, then we're going to cry. And if they do go for that type of thinking, that just shows that they are not 1400 level thinking. They are up there in the 1800s, 1900s in terms of playing strength. Let's see if it does work that way. And we said the pawn pushing here. Picture might look different when it's actually on the board and we might do something a little bit different. But we've got to just pause and not do the tunnel vision thing because there might be something better than what we actually saw because as we've mentioned when you do it in your when i do it in my head the visualization of the pieces may be a bit fuzzy in terms of where they're landing what's protecting what piece where the piece might be that might be able to take advantage they've moved the queen nothing to do with any of our calculation they've moved the queen what is that all about? So a queen could come here if it was a bullet, a blitz match, I'd just bring the queen here for looking for some sort of exchange. Totally messed up the calculation, what is that all about? That's going to be loads of pressure on that pawn. Maybe push this pawn here. It does bring their double pawns into line, but maybe we... Do, do, do. That was nothing to do with any of it. Here. Takes. Pawn takes. I'm thinking they're still pushing this pawn here. Rook comes across. I'm just going with the simple and see what happens. Goes back again, doubles. I don't know. I 
yeah definitely I, I put them higher than the rating I've got on here which is the 1700 um, about 8, 18 or 2 or something or the other they've not displayed one bit of 1400 traits that I've seen and they've gone to the same spot that we said as well I know these things <laughs> I know these things. This player is not um, of this level. Right, what can we do from this position then? Uh, we can bring this other rook in, supporting the pawn. Why have they gone here? In my head I'm thinking, I don't think it's a good position for them because if they're going challenging and if we've got a rook here, then obviously the queen's in front. You'd probably think they want to be coming here and doubling the rooks if they were doing something. This pawn's very weak. I think that's going to get challenged. We are in front of their king, but we could hit this pawn. This queen takes the pawn though, so they'll be up a pawn, and then we take, rook takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, so they would be up a pawn. If we brought this rook here, before we did that, then the queen's not going to be taking this pawn. Seems a bit long-winded and I think they're just going to end up attacking this pawn. There's going to be a bit of pressure coming on here. But we'll go with this first anyway with that story of we're attempting to push this pawn here. See how the whole things had to change because they didn't do the calculations that we thought. And... Oh, as always... You don't want to go too deep with the calculation because again look at this strange looking move here are we being set up i'm going to continue with the pawn push he may not do anything and he may just push down if he pushes then we can push this pawn here and i don't know how the queen gets in to get to this spot though because all the white squares are blocked off Come here and attack this pawn, but his king just comes and defends. I am more to set to continue this, especially seeing as I don't know what that rook move was. So I'm going to attack the pawn. If they allow us to take, I suppose that might look a bit ugly for them. The pawn can't take back. Yeah, definitely traits of like a, a 1800, 18, 18 something. Not maybe not a 1900, but yeah, uh, 1800. No, I think I put them better than the 1800. You know, as for the 1800 traits, we've got things like awareness of the concepts and principles, and they add too much unnecessary moves. Um, and they've got a big question mark about what defense and i think they've done really well with that type of stuff i think they fit more with the they understand the concepts you know the advanced concepts and principles and they use simple chess well but they miss the big picture of quality attacking and potential checkmates so they're kind of realizing that there's a situation kicking off but can we take advantage of this now so they brought the queen we take doubles the pawn then we can take again doesn't mean much does it i'm not happy bunny i think i'm wanting to take just to try and get some disruption going we take though his rook can take we can take but be careful because we we can't take back with the queen Go up there, take. Maybe the queen takes, we take, pawn takes. I'm plumping for just taking rather than taking the queen. I'm not thinking it's arty, I'm thinking it's practical because we're still opposite their king. Both of our queens are, so he's not playing that game. Let's take, obviously, taking. 
then attacking the pawn but the queen king just comes down and the rook's not staying there for long but i'm thinking maybe we'll come here but then the rook's playing defense nanny i think that might work okay ish for a draw not that i'm searching for a draw obviously just comes in defense don't know why that's taking so long there So we have to move, but it's kind of locking our rook in if we go there. So maybe we don't go there. It just comes and defends and then our rook is not in the game. Yes? No? Am I able to get my pawn up? So we come across, rook defends, and then push. Maybe the king comes across but then it's not really going to do that but i suppose it can because there's no checks can push rook's got a check on him but then he just comes here then he's got a two on one on the pawn because we can come behind the pawn with the rook oh it seems a bit sketchy to me doesn't it it's a bit sketchy okay let's go with this but they've got pawn majority on the far side, on the queen side. Well, it's brought that rook down. We thought this rook was going to be coming. But it's definitely blocking the pawn from moving then further up the board. And it's also going to be doubling on it as well. And then the king's going to come here. Ooh. I think we're going to push this pawn to see if we can get this pawn here to try and double and support. Yeah, definitely not 1400. Who are they kidding? Let's capture. Oh. We may attack the pawn. Maybe we squinch in a bit. Maybe we attack the pawn twice. Giving them something to think about. Maybe we push the pawn like we said and push again just to get the support. Only problem I do have is though pushing this further up, he can just come here and attack the pawn. Got no support with me, has it? Hmm. How do we play this? How do we play this? Attack. I think they defend, but they may go. Well, let's attack your pawn. What do we do then? Here, and they can attack us, and then we lose that sting. That's not going to work. I'm pushing this now, still can be attacked. That's going to be no good because if they take. Then we can't take back because the rook will get our rook for free. Hmm. Maybe we do like a waiting move, but the waiting move is really not going to be. We're going to have to bring this rook here to defend. It's going to come there. Yeah, exactly. 
Eee. So let's go behind. Yeah, not a 1400.
1400. 